Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at a battery that I have purchased from batteryhookup.com. Uh, this was not given to me. I purchased this with my own money. But uh, you will be able to buy them as well I'm using my discount code TECH, which helps out the channel. Um, this is a 12 volt, 6.6 amp hour, and these are LiPo 4. This is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's not the same chemistry that 18650s usually are. These uh, usually have a uh, longer life. Uh, you can charge them more times and they hold their energy better and supposedly safer when it comes to fire and that kind of stuff, but uh, that's all probably anecdotal. Um, this is a, has four cells times two and they comes in this black wrapped um, wrapper. They've cut the leads pretty short. It's hard to use these too much and I thought I might need to add more cable to them. I might have also thought I might need to bulk these up to a higher gauge. But actually I don't think I will. Uh, here's what it looks like without the wrapper. The BMS here is exposed. And um, it looks pretty nice. This BMS is pretty cool. Um, I currently have a load test going on right now. I'm using the wires that they built in. And I'm connected over to a 12 volt system. These packs are really good lead acid replacements. They pretty much hold the same voltage range. I think the low end is 10 volt and the max is 14.6. Um, but we got that running over here to this 300 watt inverter and that is the powering my soldering iron. So it's putting about a 100 watt load on there. Not sure if you can see that or not. And so what I'm testing is um, just see how when the BMS kicks in, this inverter can accept 11 volts up to 15. So this should shut off before the BMS does. But that's what I want to test. And what I plan to use these batteries for is I'm going to put three of them in parallel into this case over here to run this 300 watt inverter and that will give us a nice little um, portable system. I took one apart and kind of mounted its base here and then I'll be able to put the inverter right back on top, run the wires, put some of those banana plugs I like to use to charge it and maybe even use the, the 12 volts for something else. And so yeah, I've got a voltmeter on here just checking the voltage. And so far this thing has been running at 100 watts for quite a while. Um, and I'm just going to let it go until it falls. And so the next thing we'll do is we'll put these three together. I'm probably going to use um, silver strip to create a couple bus bars and tie them together and then to feed off to the banana plugs into the inverter. So once this test is complete, we'll go to that step. So stay tuned. All right, the test we did was complete and the BMS actually turned off before the inverter stopped working. So that's good to know is that um, it will use the maximum amount of power that the batteries have. So here's another module I took apart and looking at the way they did things, I have plenty of wire here. So the plan is, is I'm going to take these three, um, wrap them like this, unwrap these, and then run two bus bars, one on this side, one on this side and just solder these wires directly because like I said before this wire can handle 100 watts just fine and so I'm just going to do um, these three that give me 300 watts will easily run that uh, inverter at its max capacity and we'll go from there so I'm going to unwrap these and then I'm going to pull these wires out and run a, um, one of those nickel strips that we use for 18650s a lot of times I'm just going to run them across here tape it all together and make one brick and then we're going to put them in our case and uh, install the inverter and uh, see what kind of capacity we can get all right let's do it all right we got a little bit of work done here uh, we've got our um, bar here on both sides put some nice little uh, soft silicone wires and the reason I split things up like positive down here and that down there is to try to pull the current from uh, both sides so that it equally pulls from each pack. If you put them like right here theoretically that this pack will probably empty first and then this one will be right behind it and this will right by putting it on the opposite sides the idea is you're pulling a little bit from here a little bit here from the middle it just kind of sends data this way it sends you know power that way and it gives a little more even of a discharge. So each one of these uh, wires here will get soldered to each part and then we'll tape it all nice and clean and then we'll take the ends and uh, connect them to these um, uh, push on banana connectors and then we will uh, also attach the inverter wires here 
and we'll pretty much be done. Uh, we'll give it a charge and then do a test. So let's tune back in then. All right, we've got our banana plugs plugged in. These are a little different than the ones I've used in the past. These are actually flush mounted and a little more sleek in profile. So that's why I decided to go with them. And so next we'll connect the wires and the last thing we'll do is solder the wires to the bus bars and that way we're not taking any chances with uh, shorting and stuff. So let's do that. All right, one more look before we close it up and do a capacity test. We just taped over these uh, bus bars with some Kapton tape, make sure they're nice and insulated. Um, there are some posts here that are fairly closed, but they're pretty rigid and I'm not worried about a short happening in there. I'm going to put some padding in here to keep everything from shifting around too much. And then um, that will be call it. But let's do a capacity test. Instead of just doing amp hours or watt hours, um, I'm just going to do something more practical. i got a cage fan, a squirrel cage fan that I like to use on hot summer days. And this will be a great little portable power for that. And so I'm just going to set it up, fully charge this, and then see how long it lasts. So let's do that now. All right, let's go over our test rig real quick. We've got our battery pack and inverter. And I have a kilowatt meter on the AC side. And I'm just using this power supply here to uh, track the voltage. Not a big deal. I know what it's going to do, but just for the video. And our load will be a couple fans. I think we should be able to get around 100, 110, maybe 120 watts. And we'll see how long that lasts. So let's do that now. All right, to wrap the, this video, I just want to give you the results of the um, capacity test and uh, do some final notes. Um, basically, it took two hours and nine minutes to completely discharge, and the wattage was about 110, 109. So I did have the math, and that was about 238 watt hours. Out of the uh, 258, that's pretty good, because what we measured was on the AC side, so it had the losses of being converted to AC through the inverter. So that's not bad. Um, and uh, the only other thing I might do in the future is I may change out this uh, nickel strip with actual copper bar. Or I may just use this wire and just run it across and just tie in these leads. Because at 100 watts, they never got hot, but they did get a little warm. And so if I was ever to push it to full capacity, these might not be the best. So live and learn uh, next time. Um, so we will follow up this project with something else that we'll use this 12 volts. Um, exterior ports for so look for that coming up and uh, overall nice little project not too much money spent and uh, last time I checked the batteries were out of stock on battery hookup but um, you should check they may have some that are testing and uh, they'll put on the website when available but I give them a thumbs up so enjoy and I hope you like the project see you later guys